Folks, so we've got our pneumatic air ram engine ready to go. I've got all the airlines ready. I've mounted my aluminum uh, valve blocks and everything's on there. The one thing I noticed just a moment ago in my first test run was I need some valve stop guides, something that's going to stop the valve arm from traveling too far one way or another. Right now, I'm only having an issue with the valve coming back too far because the slap from the slapper is pushing it back just a little too far. So I got to hold my finger just off from it and let this bump into my finger as a stop and that keeps it running just fine. So what we're gonna do now is hook this up to some air and give it a first test run. I got the compressor turned on here, and as the compressor starts to build pressure, the engine's gonna start running fast. As long as I can keep that finger right at the exact right spot. There's some different shot angles, folks. Because again, I'm having to hold that finger right in the exact right bump stop there. And I can get the finger a little bit in the better spot. It starts running a little faster. From that angle there, you should be able to see how well that valve slap design is actually working for this. And it seems to be working and holding steady. So all our valving, all our rod design, everything seems to be holding pretty well. I'm pretty happy with this. We're gonna go ahead and let the air compressor build up to a much higher PSI. Uh, once I get these valve stops put on here, this thing won't need my finger sitting there just acting as a valve stop. Now I can switch it over to a screwdriver. There you go, folks. So I want to show you what I've done here to stop the over travel that I was demonstrating in the last shot where I had to hold my finger there behind the end of the valve rod. So right here at the tip of my finger, you see that little set of washers and little screw going through there? That's ready to go. We've got our bump stop ready, and that was very, very simple. I just had to get the right size washers. It stops it right at the perfect spot in the valve timing to create a higher RPM out of this motor. I'm only going to run it at low air pressure right now, but we're going to go ahead and hook up the air and take it for a run. Go, I'm gonna hook up the airline. As you can see there by touching the end there, I can shut it off. So there you go, folks. There's our air engine running at a low pressure. I don't have to hold my finger there anymore. It runs nice and steady. Let me change the camera angle for you. I want to give you a quick shot here from this other angle. You can see the slappers there in action. You can see the lobe. Let me zoom in a little bit for you. You can hear how nice and steady the timing is. It's an even stroke every time. You can hear how nice and steady that thing is. It's working really good. Apply some resistance to that flywheel. It's slowing it down a little at this RPM, but I can put quite a bit of pressure on that. So we can increase the PSI now and actually apply a lot more resistance to that flywheel. These pneumatic rams are capable of generating an incredible amount of force. So you can use this to run a generator. You could use this to power the bike like what we're going to do with it. Uh, we're going to go ahead and hook that sprocket like I said up to this. But at least at first, here's a working demonstration of an air-powered engine made from a pneumatic ram.